The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom is of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. Jesus walked along, and a little farther he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. In words of the Holy Gospel, our sins be forgiven. Please be seated. I don't know if you have heard the story of a man who one day approached his mother and told her that, Mom, I don't want to go back to the church anymore. You heard about the story? And he said, for two reasons. I'll give you two reasons, Mom. First of all, they don't like me. And secondly, I don't like them either. <laughs> and then the mother also looked at her uh, son with compassion and told him, son, you have to go back to the church. And I also give you two reasons. One is you're 58 years old. And secondly, you are the parish priest. <laughs> My question, my dear friends, as I start with the homily is, uh, when did you think Jesus start his preaching and healing ministry? Do you think his ministry of preaching and healing started when um, he, his parents found him in the temple as a teen boy asking or questioning the scribes or the Pharisees or the religious leaders? No, it wasn't mentioned there. Or do you think it all started with him when he was baptized. Not either, because we know that when he was baptized, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit brought him to where? The desert, right? Do you think it started when um, he was tempted in the desert for three, uh, when he was in the desert for three days and three nights? No. It did not start from there because when he went home, he did not mention anything about it. The ministry of the preaching and teaching and healing of Jesus started when John the Baptist, his cousin, was arrested. So he thought that after having prepared himself for the ministry, you know, he was brought to the desert by the by the Holy Spirit and there he immersed himself with the presence of his in the presence of his father and he was trying to develop a relationship loving relationship with his father he thought of himself when John was arrested that enough is enough I am prepared now I think I am going to bring to the streets the word of God so then and there the public ministry of Jesus of healing and preaching is started. Now, when Jesus started his public ministry, as I've said, teaching and, and healing and uh, teaching to the people, he uh, founded a poor group. And the poor group comprises of how many people? How many? No, it's mentioned in the gospel today. Four, four of those people. Andrew and his brother, Peter, and then who else? James and his brother, John, and they are the sons of 
Zebedee. So uh, we know that Jesus, uh, as we have heard in the gospel, he was uh, he passed by the Sea of Galilee and he saw first Simon and his brother Andrew and he said, "Come, I'll make you fishers of men." They were all fishermen. Most of those twelve apostles, disciples that Jesus called, were fishermen. Mm -hmm. uh, only a little, uh, uh, um, some of them, a few of them, are professionals, just like, for example, the tax collector. Uh, Matthew, but most of them were fishermen. So when they, he saw Andrew and his brother Peter, and then farther, he also had seen James and his brother John, he said, come, and I will make you fishers of men. So try to imagine the, the, the reaction or the action of the brothers James and John when they heard Jesus inviting them, come, they left everything their property their treasured property that time was their boat and of course leaving behind their family the father or the mother maybe they, they, they have siblings and but they are ready to leave everything behind so with that jesus started his public ministry with his core group and then it began to uh, get bigger and bigger until he completed his uh, 12 apostles, you know, those uh, people who worked with him. Now, um, my dear friends, gone is the time when we say that those people called by Jesus to be his fishermen are only the priests or the deacons or the bishops or what the the religious gone are those days mm -hmm. because we have we have it in the uh encyclical um uh i forgot the name of the encyclical uh, about the the laity that by virtue of our being baptized and is strengthened by the power of the holy spirit when you receive him in confirmation the apostolate of Christ became the apostolate of the laity. Laity, everyone. Not only those in the ordained ministry, but every one of us. So we now uh, share in the threefold mission of Jesus. Threefold ministry of Jesus. That is a preaching of, uh, of teaching as well. Mm -hmm. Um, to the people and um, we are very fortunate my dear friends for having been uh, given this chance this opportunity to share in the threefold mission of Christ especially on the part of the laity you the lay faithful gone are the days when we do just say amen amen and then obey pray and pay gone are those days now you actively participate in the ministry of jesus concrete example is that um before a laity like you cannot go on the altar and read the word of god this time we have lectures right lay faithful who would come up and read the word of god to the crowd so nowadays uh Lay faithful also, lay they can also share or participate and help the priest, the minister in distributing Holy Communion to the people. We have the Eucharistic ministers. Mm -hmm. So the, the truth of the matter is that uh, sometimes priests receive a lot of, uh, you know, um, comments bad remarks from the people but even then whatever those comments that a priest hears from the people from the parishioners just like that man in the story has to continue doing his mission the priest has continued to do the very mission that he is called for and that is to serve to serve the people it is undeniable that 
up until this time there are priests and this is always uh, the basis of the complaint of the bad remarks of the parishioners because there are priests who are unapproachable they grow they're grouchy and they are materialistic hmm? we call it in our language mukhang pera it's all about money it's all about money and then when parishioners see this bad attitude of uh, the, their pastor they are turned off so instead of going to church they start backbiting the priest but one thing that i would like to remind you with your brothers and sisters and for you to bear in your mind is that priesthood or being ordained in the priesthood doesn't eradicate the humanity of the priest the priest is still a person hmm? and he still feels those uh, things ordinary things emotions that you people feel hmm? but it is not an excuse for us to be doing all of these evil things because um, by virtue of our being the spiritual leaders we have to try try our very best to overcome all of those temptations because the you human side of the person of the priest if the people see in him in the priest uh, his goodness his very best of trying to work with the people and help the people you know uh, get closer to god his human goodness attracts and influences so many people to go back to the church i remember when um uh, before uh, masab mentioned in one of my sermons that for more than 20 years the pastor in our parish was an old priest and all of a sudden there was this young robust vibrant priest who was a son in the parish and he was so so dedicated he is like a priest in and and the people likes him so much like him so much because uh when he uh, meets people along the way he would always do like this and say and greet the person good morning good afternoon good evening and, and those simple ways of that priest attracts many many people to go back to the fold to the church then there came a time when many people are you know uh, attending sunday masses already and that is uh, a big a big plus plus factor for a priest because after all the mission of the priest is to attract people help the people with their prayers that their prayer, those prayers may be heard by god and bring them back to the fold of god going back to my point that all of us are being called to be fishers of men there are many also of the lay faithful who are trying their best their best um, to uh, help people fish other people for the Lord for the kingdom of God I remember and imagine those people in the parish who are actively involved for example in the religious um, uh, um, organizations in my country we have this CWL Catholic Women's League we have this uh, uh, MBG as a, a massive you remember during the epiphany the mother butler's guild we have the legion of mary mary we have a lot of all of those and they're active in doing their mission and also remember those lay faithful like you who are trying to uh, help the church the ministers in preaching the good news of salvation to the people we have the neo catechumenate i don't know if some of you are familiar of that we have the ME, the Marriage Encounter. We have the CFC, the Couples for Christ. And a, a lot more. We have, you must have heard of the uh, El Shaddai, Charismatic Movement or Oasis of Love. Oasis of Love is just like a charismatic movement, but um, specifically designed, formed uh, for 
the uh, famous ones, the actors, the actresses. So those people are trying to attract and bring back those people, famous people, back to the Lord. I'd like you to ask yourself, my dear friends, what is it that I am doing for the church as a lay person? Do I just go and attend Mass every Sunday? Am I just a church goer and that's all? Don't you think of trying to extend your membership to the church by trying to get involved actively in any of these organizations and movements in the church? Because age doesn't matter, right? Young and old, we are being called to be active, not just passive, but active members of the Church of Christ, and that is the Catholic Church. Lastly, this famous line, I know you're familiar with this, don't ask what your church can do, what, for you. Rather, ask the question, what I can do for the church. The church. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead.